Luna Chen with her presentation, uh, Reflection and, and Introspection, or possibly Introspection and Reflection, I do apologize, in Python. Um, she will have time for questions at the end, if at all possible. So a big round of applause, please. Can everybody hear me okay? Wow, <laughs> that's actually quite loud. Um, there are actually more people than I expected. This is actually my first time speaking at PyCon. Um, so a quick introduction. My name is Luna Chen, and uh, I work for a fintech startup in London called Thought Machine. Um, today's subject is going to be introspection and uh, reflection in Python. Some, some of you might have known me from Pi Ladies and uh, London Django Meetup since I've um, done this same talk before. And uh, when I did those talks, I actually um, had slides. But today, I decided to do something totally different. And uh, instead of bringing in slides, um, I was just thinking, OK, since I'm going to do live coding anyways, how about we just um, actually write the slides together? Why not? It would be more fun, right? Um, so OK, let's get started. Um, so if you're from another language background, you might have used introspection or reflection. For example, if you are from a PHP background, you might have used something like um, reflection class. Or if you're from a Java background, you might have used something like uh, um, whoops, um, object.getMethods. Um, but how about in Python? Um, has any of you used any kind of introspection or reflection in your code before? OK, nice. Um, give me a second, sorry. Um, so basically, um, what I've, from what I've seen is um, introspection and reflection are being used interchangeably in the Python community. Actually, you know what? That's actually not correct, um, because um, the purpose of those two are totally different. Um, Interest, for introspection, the um, purpose is to examine. So it's like a passive act. And uh, reflection is, sorry about that. Um, reflection is to modify. So it's an active. It's more active than reflection, than introspection, and uh, so if you would like to know what I meant, let's create a new file called. Let's start from introspection and uh, create a new file called introspection.py. Sorry about that. Sorry, thought that I needed help, but I don't. Um, so. <laughs> Um, OK, so just some quick definition of introspection. Um, it's also called type introspection. And uh, it's, as I mentioned before, it's an um, act to examine an object at runtime. So you can know um, what kind of attribute this object has and uh, or um, what type of object this is. So you, some of you might have used something like the dear method or um, object dot dunder dict um, attribute. Or you can do some type checking with type or is instance or um, is subclass. So let's um, have a quick example, um, very, very simple example of how this might look like. Um, so we'll create a parent class called pet, and uh, then I'll give myself a um, dunder init method, and it will take a na the name of the pet. Um, sorry, I think something went wrong here. <laughs> Oh, right, yeah. So you to move back to, uh... Oh, sorry. I, I think I'm just getting really nervous. I totally mistyped everything. <laughs> OK, let's um, start. Um, so we will um, create a class called pet. And uh, then we will have a dunder init method. And it would take 
itself and uh, the name. And then we will just have another method called um, um, get name. And that doesn't do anything but print out the name of the pet. And then we will have a, another class called um, clownfish, since I had a clownfish ASCII art there. And uh, then we'll just do one thing, like have one method um, swim, and then all it does, it doesn't actually do anything, but um, it would do, it would print out the name of the pet and uh, it would say swim. Okay, let's create an object from these classes. Any of you have like a good name for a clownfish that's not Nemo? <laughs> what? Marvin. Marvin, okay, nice. Um, okay. Okay, so um, we will print out the, um, we'll call the dirt method on the Marvin and uh, then print out the object dot dunderdict. And uh, then we'll check what type Marvin is. Yes, oh, sorry, yeah. Whoops. Um, then we'll do, we'll use is instance to check on Marvin to see if Marvin is an instance of, actually just to check whether Marvin is a clownfish or not. And uh, we'll check if our clown clownfish is a pet. That's quite a lot <laughs> to type out at once. Okay. So, okay. So, you can see like there are um, all these, I think I did some double thing here, did I? Oh, right, yeah. Oh, okay. I think I have to quit the terminal um, after that. Um, oh, actually, this does work. Huh. Okay. Okay, so um, you see um, the dirt, meth dirt method actually prints out all the attribute name of um, this object. And you might wonder what, why are these dunder methods here and, or dunder attribute there um, because you didn't create it. So the reason is um, all the objects are inherited from the built-in object um, class. Um, so whenever you create a class, it's actually being inherited, automatically being inherited from object. And then if you remember in Python 2, you had to actually um, um, subclass that. And uh, then we've got the um, dunderdict um, attribute, and then it gives you a um, key value pair of attribute to the actual value. You might wonder why the swim method isn't there. So um, that's because, um, the Marvin itself is actually a object, and so is the class itself. So um, any kind of um, any kind of attributes that's um, being called is actually not writable, and then so anything that's writable for, to Marvin is his name, not like so you can change his name all you all you want, or you can actually add another method like um, I can show you. So if I do something like um, Marvin um, get name equals to just like anything, like print hello. 
now this would show up. Oh, whoops, sorry. Sorry about that. Um. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I'm getting really, ner really nervous for some reason. <laughs> okay, so um, now we get the get name, but it's actually not the original get name, but it's the get name that we have defined earlier. Um, so um, let's move on to um, reflection. Um, we'll create another um, file called reflection dot py. And uh, so as I mentioned earlier, reflection is actually um, more powerful than introspection. Um, so it's to both to examine and uh, to modify at runtime. And so what comes to my mind would be something like um, set atra, and then also the dunder set atra, attri set atra um, attribute that you can overwrite in your Python object. So what I'm going to show you is this one today. Um, so basically I would, so what it does is um, it actually gets you any kind of um, methods that you have not defined in your class if um, so certain criteria is being met. So basically, if we are going to create um, a object like this from a class called greetings um, with, n with name called, um, actually I don't want this as comment now, with the name as um, Audrey. And uh, so if I call something like greeting nice, to meet you. And uh, um, it would um, give me something like Audrey, nice to meet you. And uh, then if I call any kind of, any number of arbitrary method like good morning, it would be the same thing. And uh, Um, if we have to define all these methods, it would get quite messy quite quickly. So if we just have something like um, just a magic method that helps us to call these methods, that would be great. And then, okay, um, so we would um, have the dunder init method just takes a name like um, our pet class earlier. And uh, we'll have get atra. Um, then it takes a greed, and uh, then we will have something like uh, um, um, call, and it doesn't take anything. And uh, we will have a greeting message. Um, since we would have like um, we would have um, underscores when we call the method, but we would have space when we are um, with the actual greeting method message. So what we would do is um, we would take the greet and then replace this, um, replace the underscore 
with um, a space, and then we print out um, something like uh, self dot self dot name, and uh, then the greeting message. Okay, let's tr let's try and run this and see what happens. See? So yeah, you can take any arbitrary number of um methods and it would still work. Um what I use most in this case it would be like um when when I'm creating an object in with composition and uh um Sometimes I just found it easier to do something like my object um, compost instead of like doing something like compost object my method. I could just do something like this and then have it have everything to call the method inside of my my compost method. Um, but do be careful with that though because sometimes you might. Write, overwrite your own methods. Um, okay, so I'm wondering how many time do we have left? So okay, so we still have about um, um, about 14 minutes, and uh, I would like to show you all something quite nice. Um, so it's actually in the more in the introspection category. So have ev has ever uh, has any of you ever wondered? Um, how do I get any kind of methods if I, okay, if I call, if I have a method or a function, any of you wondered how do I get the ones that I, that called that function or method? Okay, so um, there is a really cool built-in module called inspect. Has any of you used it? Okay, so, um, what we're going to do here is we would have two people, and uh, so the one people would call another one, and we will be able to figure out which one called which. Okay, so we would, um, first of all, we would create a decorator. Um, if any of you never used a decorator before, so it's really simple. Basically, it's, some, it's just like a function that runs um, code before a, another function. Instead of um, calling a specific function every single time or write that code or duplicate that code every, in every single method of yours or function of yours, um, we could just have a decorator on top, and then that looks a lot cleaner. Um, since this um, talk is not about um, decorators, um, I'm not going to go into this too much. So um, one of the things that I would like to, I would recommend it with decorators is always use this um, method from functools called wraps because it makes um, your decorated function looks exactly like like the original. Okay, so what we're gonna use here is the um, stack method from the inspect module. So what it does is um, it gives you a list of callers frame info, um, with the first one being actually being the inspect.stack, and then so it kind of goes up to see which caller it is. So um, what we would do here is just to print out um, the name of the function we are decorating. It is called by
And that now we will return the callable. And then return the wrapper itself. And now we would have um, another function called um, Peter. And then it, he doesn't do anything but print out hello. And uh, we are decorated with um, who called me. And then um, we will have another person called James. And then James would just call Peter. Whoops, I think I messed something up again. Oh my God. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Sorry. That should be the um, index of one. Sorry. I hope I ex did explain that because the first one at index of zero is actually inspect stack itself where that is called from. So going upwards, we would have um, index of one. Right. Okay, give me one moment. Thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Here we go. So, um, yeah, so, okay. Um, so there's a lot more you can do with um, inspect. On, so all these examples or introspection or in, um, reflection. Um, so the t key takeaway is um, introspection is passive and, and it's only to examine the object, but um, reflection is um, more powerful and then it can modify the object at runtime. And so, but do you use it with caution because you can um, get really, really messy sometimes. And then that's it. Any questions? So uh, thank you for lo to Luna. Uh, we do have time for a couple of questions. So if anybody has a question, I'll come around with the microphone for you. Please make sure it's a question. I've had strict instructions. Um, please, please, can you tell us some useful things you've done with inspection and introspection? Okay, so one of the things that I did, actually, in my last company, you can probably check it out on my blog post as well. Um, give me one moment, I will actually open that up. Um, so um, there are some um, examples on my blog post. Basically, what I did is um, I created a um, API um, kind of, uh, actually, a um, sorry, <laughs> I'm kind of getting nervous, um, um, kind of like a module. So basically it allows you to call different APIs um, is with like as Python modules. What I did was just using like um, import lib to actually get each module. So instead of um, um, actually specifying what name it is, you can do that in the runtime and then it creates objects at runtime, kind of like a factory pattern. Yeah. Okay, I think, I think we've run out of time for any okay. more questions, I'm afraid, for the next piece. Okay, so, so. feel free to um, talk to me up, um, off the stage. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, big round of applause again for Luna. Thank you very much. <laughs>